underscore underscore is going to be a fun one you know for years people have wanted the ability you know i want to highlight you know the active menu item in or any link and like you know this goes even farther and does some really cool animations right so in this uh, on the menus i'm adding an underscore swatch and the underscore swatch allows us it has built-in animations into it as well so you can do these really slick animations and this one is really cool i mean that is just awesome, especially if, if you notice, if you pay attention, it animates in, and then when you over, hover over, unhover, it basically animates out the opposite side, right? Like that is just, that's really cool. I mean, small little details like this on your site, um, you know, people will play around with it and they'll stay on your site longer, right? So yeah, fun stuff like that is really fun. Um, and I can't wait to see. Man, I'm really, my voice is uh, yelling at me. We're almost at the end though. We're at the underscore and the underscore is actually really simple. Okay. <clears throat> so here I have a couple demos um, in the underscore and let's look at some of these. So here in this menu one, um, so this menu one, uh, we have underscores that are animating from the middle and they're animating out, right? So um, let's look at these. So here on this menu swatch, um, here, let's go the underscore demo. So here I'm I'm um I'm targeting all top level menus within a parent class of underscore demo. Okay, so if we go to uh this call out uh or this one column somewhere. Oh here, this one column is a parent class set to underscore demo, right? Um so it's basically targeting all menus within this one column. Okay, so here we have uh we're targeting all top level menus. And in the underscore, the, we have, you have a default state and a hover state option, okay? So in the default state, you can change, um, you can either use, this first setting here defines the color of the underscore. By default, it will be the same color as the text. Okay, for example here, if I had set the, the menu one to be blue or to be text, the underscore will be the color of the text. You can then define a specific color. You can define a swatch color, or you can define your own custom CSS. So in this instance, I'm just gonna use swatch color, which is alert, which will make, as you see here in the swatch, it'll make that underscore look like that. Here you can define the height of that underscore, the width of the underscore, if you wanna make it like a static width, okay, to start. So by default here, the default width is zero pixels, but then here at the underscore on the, the, on the hover state, I'm setting it to one X, right? So essentially we're going from zero, you can't see it, similar to that scale but, uh, option on the butt. Actually, the, the technique to handle these underscores is exactly what we just did on that button. So we're starting at zero. And when we hover, we're ending at one X. So it's gonna it's gonna span the width of that text element. Okay. You can add some margins. Your alignment, do you want the alignment to be left, center, right? And that affects the animation as well. Okay, so if you look here, I'm um I'm starting it as centered, and on hover, I'm keeping it as centered as well. And that, and that gives us this animation effect where it animates from the middle and it animates back to the middle. Okay. Um, then, uh, then we have the offset, which is allows you to kind of adjust that up or down. Um, so you can, you can make it closer or farther away. If you look at this, this demo here where the hovered link is, okay. Um, you can see what the default state is and what the hovered state is. Um, all within the underscore swatch. So it allows you to kind of tweak these uh, options here. Okay. Okay. Um, let's look at the next demo. Okay. Um, here, we I use a few different options. Here I'm using the CSS option, which actually, if you look, makes it, gives it a gradient underscore, okay, which is pretty cool. Um, you can, you can, I define the height, same thing with width. Now here, if you notice here, I am doing alignment right by default and an alignment left on hover. 
Now, why would we want to do that? Well, when we do that, essentially what that does is it gives us that effect of the, the underscore starting at the left, going all the way to the right, and then when we unhover, it basically goes out the same direction. Let, let's, I'm going to go ahead and change this to be left and left, and we'll see how that changes. <clears throat> So when I hover over the link, we'll see the, the we see that the line animates out from left to right, and when I unhover, it goes back from right to left. So it, I mean that that's a valid animation too. It's a, a nice animation, okay. Depending on what you want, that could be exactly what you want. But I I do kind of like the cool little hip uh, you know hip look of this uh, um, when you animate out it animates the opposite direction. And basically, it always goes left to right. And you can also, you know, if you set that to be left and then right here, you can have it always going right to left as well, right? But I just think that's a pretty cool, uh, cool element, cool animation there.